What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to another one of Tyler's tech tutorials. Uh, again, a major shout out to my father, John Billings. Uh, 14 years ago today, he had passed away uh, tragically. So, you know, may he rest in peace. I'm sure he is looking down and smiling at us. So, in one of the videos, I mentioned that he worked in telecommunications. So did my grandfather. Uh, my dad was the phone guy. Um, and so I'm a third generation telecommunications worker. Uh, I think he would be proud. Um, uh, the last project I worked on was uh, uh, migrating our phone system uh, to facilitate a business merger. Um, so regardless of your geographical location, whether you're in another county or over 100 miles away, you can pick up your phone and dial the extension as if they were in that same building. Uh, it was a very fun project. Awesome, awesome, awesome teamwork and collaboration. Uh, it was done between three of us. Uh, and we, uh, it, was, it was a very awesome project. I think he would be very proud of that. Um, it's a lot different now. Uh, versus the traditional analog that my dad was probably used to. Uh, uh, now it's called VoIP, and that's voice over IP. Uh, and there is a number of steps that you have to take in order to properly set that up. Uh, first and foremost, uh, VLANing. You have to uh, create a dedicated VLAN for voice to optimize quality of service. Um, so when you're on the phone, uh, you, like you can definitely notice a difference. If you have one phone that's analog, one phone that's VoIP, uh, you're talking on the, the, the analog phone, um, um, you can definitely tell it's a POTS, like a, a plain old telephone system, uh, you know, which is, uh, transmitted over copper wire. Um, and that's kind of how they've always been, uh, since they were invented. Uh, whereas VoIP is actually through the internet. Uh, so all you need is an internet connection uh, for your phone system. So your phone is plugged in uh, uh, to a fi Cat5 or Cat6 ethernet. Um, and that is uh, usually uh, connected uh, to a switch on the other end uh, with switch port mode enabled, um, uh, which would, uh, with whatever VLAN ID you associate that with and how we did it with the uh, with our phone system was we um, established site to site uh, between geographical locations um, kind of like having a satellite field office um, as long as th those two sites can talk to each other uh, you can implement that technology and I have to say it was, it was an awesome awesome project to be part of and um, there's always ongoing um, improvements, uh, but overall you have to look back and say, wow. And I, I really kind of thought of that today. I, I mean, it really kind of dawned upon me because if you're working on projects, I mean, you're so focused on the deadline and debugging and troubleshooting and long hours and dealing with everything else on top of that. Uh, and you know, you don't have the time to sit down and really <laughs> recognize all the work that you did. And the um, and for me, you know, obviously I'm getting a little reminiscent of or nostalgic because he was a phone guy. And I, you know, if he were here, I'd be on the phone with him right now. And I'd be like, hey, dad, guess what I did today? So I'm sure he's with us in spirit and looking down upon us. Um so thank you, Dad. We love you and we miss you. So I'm going to break away from the emotional side of things and jump into Windows Server 2022. So, yeah, it's only been like three years and Windows already released another server. So um, I started out with Windows Server 2016. Um, I, that was actually pretty awesome. Uh, and... Uh, yeah, when I was in college, or I should say when I went back to college, that is what they were 
uh, teaching at that time because it was shortly thereafter. Uh, then they came out with 2019, and that is what is used in quite a few data centers now um, worldwide uh, for those that are using Microsoft um, services. Before that was 2012, which, ugh, it was a good server, but the Windows 8 interface was just awful. Ugh. I mean, if you liked Windows 8, please tell me why. Please. Um, the last position I was at, we had a lot of Windows Server 2008 R2s in our environment. Uh, used for Active Directory, Domain Services, uh, DNS, DHCP, uh, all on the domain controller, obviously. Uh, file services, uh, some SQL servers that were running financial applications, uh, various databases for inventory and asset management, um, uh, some other um, 2008s that were running um, access, database modules, uh, and I could keep going, uh, remote desktop services, uh, network address translation uh, built into the Windows server. Uh, so I had to upgrade those to 2012, um, and that was fun. That was a very, very awesome experience, and it really kind of, I mean, it was a difference between night and day in terms of quality of service because, wow, it's a lot faster now, I should say. Um, so that was pretty cool. Um, before you back up any servers, I'm sorry, wow, I spoke too soon. Before you upgrade any servers to a newer Windows Server version, what do you do? Well, I already said it and gave it away. You back up. You back up. And I'm going to say it again. Back up. Back up that server. I don't care if it's a physical machine, figure out a way to back it up. Hopefully it's a virtual machine, so all you have to do is back up that VMDK. If you go through a backup provider and you don't know how to do it, call me or call support or, you know, do some research, which is majority of this profession is research and, you know, collaboration and teamwork. Um, because you're always learning new things and trying to stay on top of technology. Um, and, you know, that was something my dad actually instilled upon me was, you know, they're always changing. Uh, you, you can never keep up, but you can do the best you can to, to stay on top of it and be proactive. So Windows Server 2022, it does have a number of awesome features available um, that it's... Uh, counterparts did not have um, hybrid cloud management and integration with the Microsoft Azure stack. Uh, so if you currently have VMs running in Azure, uh, you can now extend that those resources to Azure. I mean, you can with the other ones, but with the 2022, supposedly it's going to come with the hybrid uh, cloud um, management. So we'll see. The Hyper-V management is also going to be improved, um, as well as the containerization. Uh, the secured core technology and performance monitoring, as well as storage migration. Um, uh, the, the virtualization is going to be probably one of the most exciting aspects because the Hyper-V is already built into the cell. I mean, it's a role that you have to install, obviously. Um, so if you... Um, are in the process of replacing um, your hardware or buying new host machines, um, you know, now might not be a bad time to test 2022. Don't do it on your new brand new one. You want to test it first, make sure you like it because there's always going to be bugs that Microsoft will be fixing. Um, so this is why we're doing this video. We want to test 20 uh, Windows Server 2022. So, um, yeah, expanded core technology, uh, uh, disaster recovery. Uh, it's going to have a built-in Microsoft Edge browser instead of the clunky Internet Explorer, which I honestly kind of still like Internet Explorer. I still use it, and it's actually still used for a lot of, uh, you know, legacy applications, especially for government agencies. Uh, it can only work in um, Internet Explorer because, let's face it, technology is expensive. I mean, the budget's alone now are just 
they're insane. Um, and 90% of that is due to COVID um, because we now have to provide for that remote workforce. And that's probably not going to change for the foreseeable future. So Windows Server 2022, uh, here are the, um, here's the official Microsoft documentation. Um, I kind of already went over this a little bit. Uh, I will attach this link down below. Windows Admin Center. Yeah. So Windows Admin Center is awesome. I'll show you what that's all about. Uh, the Azure management. Uh, that's how you can manage your updates through Azure, which is pretty awesome. I've already tested that. Uh, so yeah, let's get down to business. So here we have uh, when uh, to actually get the server. Uh, I'll also leave this link. Uh, we have Windows Server Products and Resources. This is the Evaluation Center. So this is where I get all of the images um, for these demonstrations. All right, so all you have to do is uh, you want to click Download ISO, and you're going to click Continue, and it's going to ask you to fill out the information, um, and uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, if you want to deploy this in Azure, you can also do that. So I already downloaded the image. Uh, what we're going to do now is build it. Uh, so I have a lot of stuff running, so I'm going to close some of it down. Oh, you know what? I'll leave the, uh, I'll leave, I'll leave it up. I think I've ran at least five VMs on this laptop before and it's done. Okay. Obviously improve, improve, uh, performance is reduced a little bit, but that's okay. I think we'll be all right. So let's click new and we'll call it windows server 20. 22 and we're going to select a separate volume for this on the D drive stand storage virtual box VMs select uh, it's going to be even though when see it's so new that it's not even available yet, but they have Windows 11. Wow, okay, that makes no sense. This is Oracle virtual box, so it's open source perfect for testing purposes like this. So we're gonna select server, because it doesn't matter what the version is uh, when you're setting up in VirtualBox, as long as you select something, you could even select Windows 10, it's not gonna care. Um, so naming and where the folder is gonna be saved and the type is what matters the most. So then we're gonna click next. Uh, the memory, we want to expand it to We'll do four gigs for now. That'll be fine. If we need to expand it, we can do that. Um, we will create the virtual hard disk now, and we will select virtual hard disk. Uh, the reason I'm selecting VHD is in the event we want to migrate that to Hyper-V or VMware, ESXi, we will already have a VHD uh, for that, it just kind of makes it a little bit easier. We're going to select fixed size and specify uh, 80 gigs of storage. We're going to click create, and that's going to take a few minutes. One minute, 29 seconds. And while that's running, um, uh, for the other lab we had for Intune, uh, let's check on our Windows 10 VM3. Uh, looks like that's going and moving along great. So, awesome. Cool, cool, cool. So, back to our Intune. Um, actually, I shouldn't say Intune. I should say uh, back to our Azure. So in terms of extending the uh, Windows Server 2022 to Azure, um, 
I would select, uh, I want to show you what it looks like real quick. Actually, no, I'm not going to use that account. I'm going to use this one down here. So I'll have to drag it up. So bear with me. Thought I already had it open, but I didn't. I do. I do. Awesome. I just made some name up, so please don't make fun of me. Actually, Billings Utility Ops is uh, in recognition of my father, so it's actually a fitting name for this purpose. Uh, so this is what the Azure stack looks like. Uh, so you know what? Let's let's build a, an Azure VM. Just so, just I'll demonstrate what it looks like. So hopefully I already have a uh, virtual network. I don't, so I'm going to want to build a virtual network uh, first. Uh, let's see, the resource group is going to be, uh, we'll call it John Billings, RG. And we'll call it Bert. JB1, and it's in East US. If I, if I wanted to select the uh, Pacific Data Center, I could do that. Where is it? All right, no, it's like, I'm sorry, it's West would be the Pacific, sorry. Uh, we're gonna click Next for IP addresses. Uh, I'm gonna leave the default range, that's fine. Uh, click Next. Uh, let's see here. Um, I'm going to leave that default for the time being. Um, let's see here. And that's going to create. Very good. Or no, it's going to do a validation test in which I passed. Woohoo! So I'm going to, going to click create. And now it will create that John Billings virtual network. So if you want to, you know, implement like a hosted VoIP uh, or extend your on prem PBX. Uh, uh, running VoIP uh, to the cloud, this you could look into this um, this possibility uh, because you can now that network I just created, I can build a site to site back to my physical data center um, where all my um, infrastructure is being hosted. So that's pretty cool. So let's go to the resource just to see what it looks like. Very good. All right, so let's go back to the uh, virtual machines. I already have the resource group. Now I'm going to tie in all those resources to that one resource called John, for, for John Billings. So let's click Create Virtual Machine. And let's select the John Billings resource group. And we're going to call this Azure. VM, Azure VM, Server 1, yep, East or US Data Center, uh, Availability Zone, we're going to leave that default, uh, Security Standard, uh, will it have 2022 yet? Oh, bummer, it doesn't. Surprised I don't. Okay, so you could select any data center you wanted to. Maybe they do if we select all images. I just should have selected 2019. Okay, like I just want to go back now. So let's select window. Okay, there we go. Select. And then. Oh, it is available. Cool. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to. Hmm, let's see. Yeah, you know what? Why not? Let's, let's check it out. So we're going to select. Windows Server 2022. Uh, we don't want Server Core. We don't want Gen. Uh, actually, yeah. Okay.
I am going to generate a very secure password down here so you can't see it. I'm going to make it really long and complicated. And behind the scenes afterwards, I'm going to implement 2MFA for this. Uh, we're going to leave 3389 open uh, for RDS because we'll connect it through the RDS on our local device. Uh, I mean, we could do SSD, but we're just going to um, do a standard SSD. Uh, or actually, we'll do a standard hard disk drive. We don't need nothing fancy for this purpose. Uh, encryption. Um, Uh, so we'll leave it as default, uh, and then we'll click next for networking, and then we'll want to select, uh, yep, that's very good. Very good. Uh, we're gonna we're not gonna mess with load balancing right now. We are going to now. I could join this to my Azure AD, but this is on a separate Azure um, account, so we're not gonna mess with that. Uh, tags, um, I'm not going to worry about that right now. Um, and then it's going to run a validation test to make sure I did everything correct. And very good, it passed. So let's click create. And another really cool thing you can do with Azure is uh, you can also um, manage this through the um, uh, command line, uh, whether it's bash or PowerShell. Um, I'm pretty sure it's PowerShell that I'd, yeah, because it's default, because um, I used it last time. Uh, so another way you could do that is opening up a PowerShell um, uh, and just running Connect Azure. You have to install the module first. Um, so if I, let's say, let's look at the AZ virtual network. Uh, it's going to list them all, and then we can go up and look at, um, this is the JB one right here, very good, cool. All right, so deployment in progress, that will take a few minutes. Let's go back here and check on our uh, Windows Server 2022. Uh, that disk is done being built on our VirtualBox platform. Uh, then we want to select System. And so if I wanted to, I could expand it to 8092, which I'm going to. So that'll be eight gigs of memory. Uh, the processor will uh, give it two processors, which is minimal uh, standards for, uh, for building servers. Uh, display, uh, we're not gonna mess with that. Storage, we're gonna wanna mess with that because we need to add a, um, add the, or mount the Windows Server 2022 ISO, and I am pretty sure it's this one. I hope. Audio, I'm going to turn that off. We don't need it. I mean, whatever we don't need, we want to turn off, and that's also a good practice. If you don't need it, don't use it. Network is going to be host only because I don't want this talking to other devices on this network, and that's it. I mean, if I really wanted to, I could, but you do that, I'm not going to. For this purpose, uh, it's fine. So I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to double click on Windows Server 2022. And we should see Windows, um, uh, that ISO um, be mounted and load up. Very good. That's exactly what we want. Awesome. OK. So we're kind of doing like 50 bajillion things at once, so bear with me. We're at, we have Windows Server 2022. We're testing um, on VirtualBox and Azure. So the uh, virtual machine is already created. Uh, so let's go to the resource. Yeah, let's check it out.
So here's the advantage of uh, running the Windows Admin Center, and we'll set that up uh, because you can connect um, all. You, you can manage um, all of your 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 entire data center um, through the Windows Admin Center uh, through one console. And like, I don't know about y'all, but I'm all about simplicity. Like, if you can keep things simple, keep it simple. And so you log once you set up Windows Admin Center, you can. Um, all you have to do is connect uh, uh, to your on-prem data center. Uh, you can even add extensions for uh, for Dell PowerEdge or um, HP ProLiant uh, or HPE, whether it's Dell or HPE, um, doesn't matter. Uh, they have it built in for everything. So then you connect your Azure account and you can extend your resources um, to the cloud from your on-prem to the cloud. Uh, the updates is a great example. Updates, monitoring, uh, uh, load balancing, and resource utilization is what's going to really give us the full aspect of hybrid virtualization. I don't know. It's, I'm, I just kind of just made that up. Anyways, yeah, not not the uh, extension of resources. Uh, for this purpose, I'm not going to do all that, but we will. So let's look at Windows Server 2022. There it is. Very good. Let's click Next. Install now. So this is probably going to be like a replica the, the GUI, the graphical user interface, aka GUI, will look just like Windows 11, I'm sure. I mean, I hope not, but um, I probably will. Maybe not. I guess we'll find out. Okay, so while we're waiting for that, uh, let's go. I mean, here we have our resource, uh, and we can also verify by going get AZVM. And we can see the Azure VM right there. Very good. So let's connect to our Azure VM. And let's select RDP for remote desktop. And let's download the file and let's open when done. We're going to click connect. And it was billing dot admin oh. so let's bring this down here so I can make sure that I'm typing it incorrectly All right well let me oh it won't All right, so let's cancel that uh, you know what I'm going to do it on here then So it's the IP address is 20.115, and I'm definitely going to kill this VM and destroy it as soon as I'm done. Okay, so what am I doing wrong? So let's look at... Admin. My 
type net and write. Oh, it's going to lock me out if I'm not careful. Okay, so, sorry about that. Technical difficulties. Trying to do too much at once. Alright, so back to our VirtualBox uh, demo for Windows Server 2022. I'm going to select Standard Evaluation. Click Next. And I'm going to accept the license terms and agreements and click next. Uh, we're going to select custom install. I'm going to select uh, the virtual hard disk that we created a while back. Click next and let that puppy run. It's going to take a few. All right, update was successful. Very good. So now let's try connecting to. You know what? I'm going to copy paw this, or at least try to. Got too much open here for one. saw a really good sign where is it where is my remote desktop okay I think I found it there it is awesome so let's click next all this other stuff has to go away though because it's starting to drive me nuts very good all right so let me bring this up here all right so here are the here's the uh, the Azure virtual machine we created with the uh, John Billings resource group and this is running Windows Server 2022 so this is my first time actually looking at it so I'm excited to see what it looks like I wish they would still play in the Houston Astrodome. I always loved watching games on TV in the what they call the eighth wonder of the world, where the Oilers and Astros played. Pretty cool. So this is awesome. Uh, this is what Windows Server 2022 looks like, and wow, it looks just like Windows 10. Holy cool. That's awesome. I'm going to fix the date and time. Although, honestly, it really doesn't matter because it's we're using Azure's data center for this. So, Somebody holler when they see Eastern Standard Time. Let's see here. Right there. Got it. That's better. Wow. Oh, it's almost 9 o'clock. <clears throat> okay. It's cold and raining. I did a lot of cleaning today, and I was going to go do some things tonight, but I'm not sure if I'm going to. I will go 
pay my respects uh, to uh, to Dad's uh, tombstone uh, tomorrow when it's actually Halloween. I usually try to make it up on the thirtieth, but that did not this year. We know where he, he actually is, so that's just a place that is just a stone. So yeah. Anyway, so now if we get time zone and power shell. We can actually see what it looks like. And or just verify that it's actually, yeah, very good Eastern Standard Time. Uh, so let's get details about this machine. Uh, with the uh, computer info command lat. Um, so like the uh, device name, uh, which is up here. Uh, that's the one I listed in when I was building the machine. Um, if I want to join this uh, to a domain, that's where it gets tricky. Because you have to set up Azure Active Directory Domain Services, which is like the third piece of the puzzle to on-prem Active Directory, Azure Active Directory, which is an extension of your on-prem infrastructure. So in the lab I did with Intune, we actually didn't have that tied into Intune, or I'm sorry, tied into Active Directory. It was just Intune. It was just Azure Active Directory. Um, and so, I mean, if we wanted to set up Azure Active Directory on that um, and add the server to the uh, um, to that domain, we could do that. Uh, maybe we will. So, pretty cool. Um, so, if we want to manage this or add a resource, I'll click Next, role-based feature. Um, Let's see. The, let's see. We'll do a we'll do a file server. Click next. Install. Another way you could do that is through PowerShell, uh, through Windows feature name. Right. Oh, let's wildcard it so I don't see the ugly red squiggly there. Yep, I had it right. Bummer. So let's get Windows feature name. And it should say installing. Very good. Anyway, I'm going to minimize this. I'm actually probably going to kill this VM here in a quick hot second. All right, so we'll pick up with the Windows Server 2022 in VirtualBox later. Um, there's other stuff I want to do tonight. So I wanted to do this video in memory of my father um, because, you know, he was pretty awesome, especially around Halloween. Um, you know, he was um, always the, uh, the the thrill seeker of and the spookster of Halloween. So... Funny story about the haunted house, the Andover haunted house. He would sit in that chair um, with that mask on, and everyone would think he's a dummy or a scarecrow or not real. So they would get really close, and they're like, "Is he real?" And they would get ready to touch him. And as soon as they would get um, nano centimeters away, he would jump and scare him nano centimeters really isn't a thing but when they got really close he would jump and scare them and they would they, yeah it was it was a pretty cool thing to watch and then uh he had this blow horn uh that he would toot when kids would walk through the um uh, when it used to be at another location he'd have this blow horn when he would toot and i'm not actually crying i'm just my voice is getting annoyed because I'm talking too much for these videos because these videos require a lot of talking. So Halloween in memory of John Billings, we miss you. So
please leave your comments and questions if you're allowed to. And don't try hacking this machine because if you do, I'm going to find out. And I'm going to kill this resource group or um, right after this video. So, happy Halloween and hope everyone has a wonderful rest of their October.